Gentlemen, welcome back to the shop today. I happen to have clapped my dirty dick beaters on a staple of industry, a pressure regulator, which of course is known as a pressure regulator in the trades, but it is actually a pressure reducing valve as opposed to a pressure relief valve. A pressure relief valve controls the pressure upstream. A pressure reducing valve controls the pressure downstream. We have about 100 PSI going in here and this will control the downstream pressure. It never goes above whatever we set this at. You would commonly see this in consumer applications for scuba gear or uh, you know little compressors and so forth. What this does is it takes high pressure out of the tank and reduces it down to whatever pressure we want. Of course, if you're scuba diving, you need to have a very low pressure entering your lungs, otherwise you blow up like a puffer fish and die. So we're gonna have a look at how this thing is put together and how it works. Well, here we are with egg on our faces, or at least here I am with egg on my face. Kind of like meeting granddad's old Navy buddies. More than meets the eye to this thing. So I had taken for granted that I knew how this thing worked, and I do know how it worked globally, but uh, the easiest person to fool, of course, is yourself. I had filmed this whole thing, took the whole thing apart, and just made little errors, and they started to compound to where it got to be, so it was just an ugly dog's breakfast. So we're going to go at her again. I'm going to show you exactly how it works because it is a devilishly clever device built by fucking brilliant, devised by brilliant people. And there's a few little snags that can catch you on how this thing actually works. So at the risk of triggering my... Uh, trip trip tripophobia i hate blowing in little holes it fucking grosses me out so it is normally closed and then when we open this poppet valve i'll show you what this is air goes through so that's our first clue that this is a normally closed valve so we take off this beautiful brass gland end here and we have a bias spring, a preload bias spring. And we also have a poppet valve. It happens to fit in here perfectly. So when there is no pressure on the inlet, this bias spring ensures that the poppet valve is closed. Now, there is an effective area, a very small effective area. And the reason they've done all this with the Buna and O-rings and the perfectly fitting and here as well, nice seal there. But we can see here that that effective area cancels out the top side of this one. This is completely canceled. So all we have for area that pressure can bear on that actually makes this seat is a very thin ring along here. So you're not going to get a huge whack from 100 PSI to set this valve. All you're going to do is have this little effective area and this bias spring to close the valve. This is the control section, and it has a diaphragm, as well as a preload spring, and a screw that provides, this is, this is a compound, uh, compound rate, or a differential rate, or a oh, 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 variable rate spring, because it's a cone, it's a variable rate spring. So what happens here, is the outlet this guy the outlet is teed in to the front side of this diaphragm we know because of the top side control here that the poppet is normally closed if we want air in the outlet side what we need to do is put force on this spring so we screw it down and that opens the poppet up that allows air to go to the outlet. It also allows air to go to the front side of this diaphragm. Now, once the diaphragm gallery pressurizes enough to equalize the force on the spring, 
then since these all things being equal, these things are equal, what happens is the poppet resets itself. So depending on how hard we turn this spring, we need more pressure in the outlet gallery in order to uh, equalize. So this controls the, the downstream pressure and the way it does that is by balancing this force, the spring on this, the, the force on this spring with the force created by this effective area times the pressure. Uh, effective area times pressure gives you force. Once these are in balance, the poppet seats and you get no air in there. As soon as you drop air pressure out of here, say you're using a gun or something, and you want to use some of that air, as soon as it drops, now these are no longer in balance. You see, we drop air out of this gallery, air pressure out of this gallery. These are no longer in balance. The spring unseats the poppet. And that is how it works. So what would happen if you had a tear or a hole in this diaphragm? You would get full pressure air out of the outlet because there would be nothing to overcome that spring tension and the poppet would be open all the time. Whoopsie. Another thing that could happen is this spring could break or the poppet could seize in the housing and you would get air out all the time. Now what if you didn't get any air out of this even though you cranked the fuck right out of her? Well, that would be that, that spring that went spring and spring and that would have to be broken because there would be nothing, no force at all, that would allow you to open that poppet valve, right? So that would be a broken spring. The only other thing that can go with it, most of the failure modes of this appear to be you would get air coming out of here all the time. And then one failure mode, that big beefy spring breaking, eh, eh, not very likely. Like my Mexican buddy, Carpe Diaz, says, bonus nachos question. What about... Now, this is a, a bit of a brain teaser here to see if we understand. I, it, what happens now if we drop all the pressure out of the inlet and we still have pressure in the outlet? What is going to happen? Is the pressure going to stay in there or is the pressure going to exhaust? Now, I say, and I've been wrong before, because we drop, if we drop pressure here, we have more pressure on the underside of this poppet that should pop it up and out the inlet. So I'm going to say if you drop the pressure off on the pressure side, on the inlet side, you're going to also lose all your pressure on the outlet side. So if this is a big long run of hose, it's all going to come out. Or no. No, actually, because of the differential, if you look at the size of this effective area, it's the same as the inside of this guy. So those two forces negate themselves. All we're left with is the bias spring. So the bias spring is going to seat the valve and the pressure in here is going to remain in here. Ha <laughs> ha! That was pretty incredible. You see, it worked both ways. In one case, the pressure in here was too low to maintain the seal on that poppet. And in another case, when we go, went just a little bit higher than that threshold, there was enough pressure in here to keep everything seated and it maintained the pressure. So interesting. <laughs> That would be what they'd call an artifact of manufacture. Interesting little, I'm sure it's not designed that way, but it's just inherent in the, the, the mechanism itself. Pretty fucking cool, I think. Thanks for watching. Keep your deck in a place.